terrier? Terrier, why don't you just call it ground? Well, that's what we call it, and it's a grapery. Not a vineyard, for God's sakes. <laughs> Maybe the time has come for us to, to think of selling the farm. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to be bootlegging to the States? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Everybody does it. And what's more, half the time the government turns a blind eye. Oh, Christy, just look at this room. Anybody, who's anybody is here? It's about time Ontario's wine industry was honored and its pioneers acclaimed. As the mayor of the town of Lincoln, I, I guess if I were going to describe uh, pretty much a perfect partnership, I'd be talking about the Lincoln Rotary with the Lamplighter Tour. So having the Lamplighter Tour going now for 10 years in the town of Lincoln is really important for our cultural community. And you know, we're really proud about our heritage here in the town of Lincoln. The son are delivering some wine to Foster Creek. May I offer you some tea? I became involved in the uh, Lamplighter Tour through Rotary, being a member of the founding member of the Rotary Club of Lincoln. We had the opportunity to visit another community that was holding a lamplighter tour and we thought that this might be a project that we could incorporate in our community. It all comes back to uh, when lamplighter started 10 years ago and we built on that success of uh, that community project and uh, some wonderful talent in the community, actors, production people, logistics. We're very, very proud of, to say that uh, we've got this lamplighter production. Here, let me lift my dress up. I have been involved in the lamplighter tour pretty well from the beginning. Uh, the first year I was an audience member, but, but from the second year on I've had some role or other. For, for those of us who have lived here for years and years, we've obviously learned a lot, but many of the people who have been involved in lamplighter are new to this area. It's provided an excellent vehicle for some of those people to really get involved in the community in a, a very um, unique way and to learn about history at the same time. That kit is perfect foil for me. In around 2002, we had relocated from Toronto to the Lincoln area, and at that time, one of our neighbors suggested that we come and attend a meeting about a project that was about to unfold. I feel like these people um, in the community opened their hearts to us, and I see how strong this community is because of the quality of people that are involved. One of the things that I think that I really liked about Lamplighter is the way that it creates community. You begin to see the buildings as not just buildings, but as places where people live, stories that emanated from those homes over time. And it really, I think, pulls people together in an understanding that they're all a part of the same group. In 2011, Barb and I were very happy to open our home to the Lamplighter production of Along the Black Walnut Trail. Both George and I um, had a wonderful time doing it and our house was very well suited for it because it was, our house was built in 1830 to 1840. It showed very well and the actors loved uh, playing in it because it was just like the time that they were playing. Some of the benefits that I perceive that the community garners is uh, an appreciation of the local history, which is a huge part of understanding where you're coming from, where the community is currently, and where the community is going. But the bottom line is it's really the first settlement of Mennonites in Canada in the late 1790s. And an awful lot of people don't know that. So I view the Lamplighter Tour as a really local shot in the arm uh, of historical knowledge. I do enjoy the fact that it's real life drama. It's not like some, um, you know, 
unrealistic type of plays. They're, they're like a slice out of history, they're real, reality. And um, yeah, this year's play that I'm in um, is, like I said, with my husband and my two children. We're part of a family in, the, in a home and we're kind of struggling with what to do with the farm and there's an accident during the play with our son. He gets hurt and so it really makes us come to a decision point of do we really want to keep farming? So there's some tension there. There's some, some wrestling with um, decisions. So it's, uh, it's a really neat yeah, play and uh, yeah, like I said, very realistic. With this farm? You know how tough it has been for us financially in the past 20 years. Is it going to get This is my second year playing the Lamplighter Guide. This year, the Lamplighter Guide is actually the new Winemakers Museum Tour Guide. So we start out in the future in the year 2020 and we bring our audience back in time to various points over the last century. The Lamplighter Guide takes their group through the entire tour from beginning to end and explains a little bit about what you just saw if you're in the audience and what you might expect to see in the next play. Ladies and gentlemen, I do welcome you to 1959. I've really enjoyed the Lamplighters because it's a very, uh, it's a knowledgeable, all the plays are very knowledgeable, very historical and of course you learn as you go along in our Niagara Peninsula. Each year there's a different theme. This year it's all about wine. This year I'm in the play called Making History. It's very enjoyable. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of dialogue in it and uh, we people at the back are just uh, relief from the many words that the poor actors have to get through. One of the things that I like best about Lamplighters is the fact that we get to perform five or six times a day. When the audience comes in, you do your best, but at, after five performances in a row, you're really just running on automatic pilot, and that's what I think acting really, really is, is you can forget about the lines, you can forget about the blocking, and it's really just repeating that life over and over again. And then to do that two or three or four days in a row, to me, is the ideal acting experience. Herman, listen to yourself. Almost guarantee? Well, that's exactly what you said when you told me a few years ago to plant Foch the Shonak. I, I really enjoy it because you, you as you're performing, it's a, a small, intimate group. And, and, you know, you see the same people year after year after year, so, you know, Lamp is, is doing something right. Yeah, filling a little piece of paper with a pencil that's attached to the table, Mr. Jane. You know, you're walking around town and go to Tim Hortons for coffee and, you know, hey Rob, how are you? You know, we saw you last night or last week or last month. So it's neat to get recognized a little bit. It's my two minutes of fame, I guess. What? With gas at 25 cents a gallon? No Thunderbirds here. Been doing Lamplighter since 2003. I've only missed one year, but there was tremendous opposition to the fact that I couldn't do uh, lamplighters anymore. There was uh, riots in the streets of Beamsville. Um, all my fans, all the ladies in Beamsville, uh, you know, from Beamsville to Smithville to Grimsby to Vineland, there were riots, the ladies were going crazy. They had to have Jens Hansen back, so here I am. <clears throat> Bond, James Bond. I've been involved with Lamplighter right from the very beginning. One of the things I love the most and brag about anytime I talk about it is the fact that we have people from 8 to 10 years old to in their 80s and we're all equal we're all actors we're all involved we have this wonderful every cast always gets a sense of community and unity within our cast and and I don't know of any other community involvement where you can have every single generation every possible age on that equal of a footing and having that much fun I really don't. I think it's fabulous for that. A tramp, a, a gangster. Don't be silly. I'm enjoying the part I have this year quite a lot. Um, it's a lot more comedic than usual, uh, but it's also a really big part in the whole play, and I like having that. Our entire staff will be happy to help you at that time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I've been a part of Lamp Lighter for nine years now. I started when I was 12 years old, um, so I was still in elementary school. And I did it all through high school and then uh, also since I've graduated. Uh, I just keep coming back every year. I think my favorite part is that it always just feels like a family. Um, we have like a cast dinner at the end of things and it's just so great to see everybody after the play. Like you get to like catch up with them at the end of the year and um, yeah, it just it really feels like a family and you like pass people on the street or in town and they're like, oh, like how are you doing? And it's a, it's a really good way to, to meet people and it just, it just keeps feeling like family every year I come back. We've grown from being a, I think a small production 10 years ago to something that I believe this year will have over 600 people um, over four days. And we look forward hopefully to another 10 years of another exciting chapter in the project. I'm very, very glad to be a part of this, this Lamplighter tour just because it's, it's involved so many members of the community and uh, I'm, I've been very happy to be one of them. And Bev was my uh, artistic director pretty much every year until we started to branch out and have different directors. She was just amazing, uh, a total inspiration for me. Just all the time, uh, even now when she's not my director, and I, I love my director that I have now and last year, but um, for better or for worse, she is always the voice in the back of my head saying, slow down, speak clearly, you can do this, and she's, um, and even like at work when I find myself rambling and talking really fast in front of people, she's saying, hey, Sarah, slow down, and <laughs> that's awesome. So she means a lot to me, and she was an amazing teacher through this whole process. Hi, I'm Jennifer Southward, I'm producer for the Rotary Club of Lincoln Lamplighter Tour. Um, one of the crazies of this group that in 2003 went to see a, a play in another, uh, an event similar to this in another city and uh, came back and said, well, why don't we do this? Uh, seemed pretty easy. <laughs> Pass on to Bev. I'm Bev Haskins and I was the artistic director from day one until last year when illness kind of put me in the, well no I did, I was involved last year. Yes you were. Uh, yes, you to were. some extent. And this year I watched from afar with interest. But I've been with the show in heart and mind and mostly life for the full 10 years. At that uh, initial um, workshop, which um, was t took place in March, they told us that we should count on working at this for about a year and a half before we put on our first production. And uh, um, we said, oh, well, I think we can do it by this November. So we had uh, just over six months to put this together and uh, with everyone's help here, working as a very strong team, called ourselves a steering committee in those days, but really we were a team. Um, we had to do, you know, everything from scratch, from getting our logo to um, to sort of building a brand around the idea of the Lamplighter Tour, and that's what, what Jennifer had an expertise at. And uh, we did those teaser ads, mm -hmm. um, and then we had to find people to fill the various roles from the community. And so I knew of Bev's uh, ability in the drama department and uh, contacted her, and she came to that workshop, and that was from day one and so many other people Jennifer we knew from the community and and all of these people were involved with with uh, Rotary but there were other people who were non Rotarians who we invited to that meeting and uh, they all as we said uh, jumped on board with the lamplighter tour at that time we didn't even have a name in, until about February just before the meeting so that all had to, to sort of come together in that first year you know when Jennifer called me to try to describe this. I didn't get it. 
you must have told him three times, and I didn't get it. I sort of got it, but it was like, okay, <laughs> and they do what? And who, right, you know? But I came to the meeting because, why not? And, and then said, sure, okay. And it was funny because at the end of the day, I said to Jennifer, well, what did you have in mind for me? And she said, well, artistic director. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like the whole enchilada. That would be me. Okay, well, let's do it. So, uh, I'm sorry. yeah, no, it sort of went from there. As if we've known then what we know now. Um, we never would have put on a show that <laughs> November. It was just, uh, it was really, really horrendous. There was a lot of stomach lining that got used there up There was, year. yes. <laughs> but we did it. But we did and it. And every year got bigger and bigger and better and better and innovative. And there was always something different. Yes. The format remained much the same, but there was always something that was so thrown in there, a link or whatever. I remember one of my fondest memories is of Bob. I needed a telephone in one play, and I needed the telephone. It was a 19, what, 70s? Yeah, the party line, party 70s. Party line, yeah, women talking on a party line. And I needed the phone to ring at certain times, in certain ways, and it was gonna cost big money, if I remember correctly, Bob. Yeah, um, $300. To buy the phone and have it work. And he was, and Bob was the kind of person who just worried his little brain over, how do I do this, how do I do this? And I picked up the phone one day, said hello, I heard this, pring, pring. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I got it. And it was a little <laughs> tiny bell thing that we stuck under the desk that the woman could reach down without anybody seeing and ring it herself when she needed it. And it cost three bucks or something to that effect. And so that's the kind of thing that this, these people on this team would do all the time, mm -hmm. would be to come up with really creative, innovative ways of doing something for almost nothing so that we put all the money back into our project. And uh, that was fun. And it's been very gratifying to see the event like, or to, to, to see that we started out by wondering what kind of a community project we could do, where we would put our money. And back in 2004, we met with an individual who um, started something called Friends of Charles Daly Park. We thought maybe we could do this band shell, but we needed somebody else to help refurbish the park. And that got rolling, and then, as you heard today, the partnership happened with the town of Lincoln. And then it's so gratifying to see that the spin-off from that has been the Sunset Music Series, which is able to use that, that band shell, called the, now called the Rotary Shell, to be able to showcase musicians from across this, this area to... Um, to you know, audiences now that are thrilled to be there on Tuesday night, watching these musicians on stage, watching the sunset over Lake Ontario, and often seeing the moon rise in the background just before they leave. So that's been gr very gratifying. And now we have a new event that uh, we started last year called Wingding, and uh, that's a blues fest, two-day blues fest down at Charles Daly Park. So it's all the spin-off of these things that uh, have, have cute accumulated and uh, um, and the, the result of, of such a great community coming together.